Hello everyone, in today's video I will be teaching you how to play with the white pieces against one of the most popular defenses from Black's point of view, the Slav defense. There has been many courses being done by famous grandmasters on various platforms like Chessable on this, but I'm going to show you a weapon for white which you have not heard of before. We're going to be playing exchange variation followed by bishop to g5. This is a very cunning and innocuous looking move, which is quite devious and I think it's going to give you massive amounts of practical chances. The idea behind this move is quite simple, we're pinning the e-pawn and trying to confuse the black's development. There are quite a few ways how black would try and play against that, for example f6, knight to f6, moving the queen to b6, and a lot of times queen b6 followed by e6, which closes down the bishop. Let's try learning an idea against most of these variations. First of all, knight f6. Well, here we're going to be taking, and it's better for them to take with the G pawn, because if they take with the E pawn, which is actually quite common at intermediate level player, at least my students are claiming that, we're going to be playing against the isolated pawn over here. So you can play knight to c3, g3, bishop g2, and very often you even get knight e2, knight f4 to play lots of pressure on this d5 pawn. For example, knight c3, knight c6, at this point e3, bishop e7, we could just Kero, the light square bishop, followed up by knight e2 and knight f4 to apply pressure on d5. So if you don't like fianchettoing the bishop, it's also possible just to play bishop d3, knight f3, or knight e2, knight f4. The white gets comfortable position where the plan is clear cut to attack the d5 pawn. Now, if they're going to be taking with the g pawn, we're going to be applying the strategy against the bishop pair, which is to put pawns in the color of opponent's bishop that we don't have. So most of our pawns are going to be going onto the door squares, and we're going to be trying to attack the light squares, because we have three minor pieces that could attack light color versus theirs too. For example, knight to c3, knight to c6, e3, pawn to the dark color. They're going to be playing pawns to light, because we have the light square attacking strategy. So we play bishop d3, for example, say f5, Knight to f3 is a common move, for instance, bishop d6, and somewhere here we could play g3, and you could see we're neutralizing the dark square bishop, which we don't have, and white is going to continue playing along the light squares. I think development is quite clear. We could just simply castle, rook to c1, and white is considered to be slightly better in this position due to the black's damage pawn structure. Now as we go back, knight f6 is not the only attempt. Very often you will see queen b6, and here is where you will have lots of fireworks. Knight to c3, and they at this point cannot take on b2 because of knight takes d5. I've had this position many times against online level players of 3, 2300, 2400. They're still following for these lines. So at this point, what do we need to know? If they play e6, a lot of times we could include subsequent move rook b1 just to cover this b4 square one, might, one more time with the rook. At this point, it doesn't matter, but in some alternative lines, it will. For example, take a2, and we simply win the rook on a8, white is winning. What is the alternative? Well, black would try the move knight a6, but here we have e4, and bishop b5 is coming, rook b1 is coming. You see if we go bishop b5, they can only take with the block with the bishop, and after taking, their king ends up in the middle. This completely loses position for black. What very often I see in this position is people just playing a move like e6, and at that point, we're going to play against the light square bishop. So this is becoming a long-term positional grind. We're, tr we're trying to prevent their light square bishop from becoming good. And I think that casual looking moves like e3, bishop d3, knight f3 and castles will give us typical exchange slav advantage where black has played e6 and locked in their light square bishop. So ideally, you're going to be getting something like a knight against that light square bishop. And I think that white has a long-term static advantage that is probably light to medium. What are other lines that they could be playing? Well, another move that they could be trying is h6, and it has a very interesting detail behind it. If we're going for the same line as black, this time after queen takes b2 and knight takes d5 and e6, if we were to go for knight c7, at this point we cannot take on a8 because after bishop b4, our bishop is no longer in g5. So it cannot go to d2, and so white in this position is losing the queen. So it's very important to remember that this change forces you to play rook to b1. That's what, what I was mentioning in the previous line. Now if they take on a2, everything is fine. We could still go for knight c7 and grabbing the rook because there is no bishop b4. 
So the main line for black is to go queen a3 to keep this idea of bishop b4 alive. So we'll go knight c7, for example, king d7 takes on a8, bishop b4, white has to give up the exchange back. And at this point, we simply have a perpetual check like this. If you're happy with the draw, you could go for this line. But if you're in for something more, at this point, after queen a3, there's a move queen to c2. Fantastic lines start occurring. We're threatening knight c7 again, and also we're threatening c8. So the only move is knight a6. At this point, we go e4, preparing bishop b5. So if they take this knight, bishop b5 simply kills. For example, bishop b7, say take, take. And there are many winning moves after rook b7. So I don't know even where to walk with the king, but you can see that king is completely open in the battlefield and you will find a victory there for sure because black's king cannot survive in a position like this. So after we go e4, the main move for black is bishop d7, which is blocking bishop b5. But at this point, we could play bishop takes a6. And if they take back with the pawn, we have knight c7 checkmate because the bishop is covering d8 and e7 squares. So they would have to take the knight. And after bishop b7, I've had this position a few times. White is, again, much better. So we have very interesting lines um, you know, from this position. One of the main moves that grandmasters often are trying is queen e5. They could have a lot of fun with queen to c3 going back. And even though the positions are wild, usually everything is objectively working to white's favor. And at least you have a draw in our pockets. Because a lot of times people try to play various different sharp lines which include gambits and i think that if you're risking at being worse i wouldn't be taking that with white now over here if black plays perfectly you're gonna end up in an equal position at worst that is the risk that we can be taking and i think if worst case scenario is equality then we're not risking anything at all and one more line that i would like to show you is the move f6 here i like bishop d2 because after knight c6 we're going to be playing knight to c3 and it seems like we're leaving the pawn hanging. But if they take on d4, we have e3 and preparing queen h4. So I have this a few times. If they go knight c6, we have good game after queen h5. Oh, white is threatening knight c7 and all that. So black needs to play a move like king uh, f7 or king d7 or rook to b8. White is clearly better due to the lagging development of blacks. So the correct move for black at this point would be after e3, knight f5 to not allow this. And then we'll have full compensation for the lack of pawns. For example, bishop d3, five, and knight to e2 followed by queen b3. Even though we're pawned down, black's development is very hard to carry out. So grandmasters have been trying all sorts of moves. Well, for example, say bishop e6. And after queen b3, it's just difficult. There is a pawn pin here. There is captures on b7. The pawn pushes don d to anything. White can castle, rook c1, rook d1. And I think practically speaking, and objectively I know that white has a full compensation for a pawn, but practically speaking, I think white is much better in this position. If you enjoyed the video, please hire me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the screen. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.